Okay, now we have coming up for you a panel session, and I'm going to introduce and welcome on stage for the panel Brand Investments for Sustainability, Wei Shi Gong, Chief Investment and Technology Promotion Division and Coordinator of Unido Investment Technology Network. Wei Shi, please join me here on the stage right next to me, if you will. Wei Shi is going to be moderating the conversation, telling us a little bit of background now, and he will be joined by the following people Bebars Altunas. WBAF Chairman and Investor. Herbert Kovar is joining us. He is a partner at Deloitte, and I'd like to invite him actually to take the stage just opposite myself. Wolfgang Schickertanz is SCA Advisory Brand Global Select Fund Fund Manager. He will also be joining us on the opposite side of the stage. Stefan Ungar is Professor of the Department of Economics and Business of St. Anselm College in Boston in the United States. Wu Guangxuan is president of the Shenzhen Federation of Industries, and Yang Wei is vice president of the Royal Town Planning Institute. And Weishi, I know you're going to kick us off right now. You're going to tell us a little bit about what's coming up in the panel. We're going to hear how brands and companies can attract new talent, increase customer loyalty and sales, and improve their market position and facilitate exports to new markets. So you have a lot to cover. Um, I'm going to give you the stage now. So please, a big round of applause for Weishi. Thank you very much, sir. It is difficult to uh, moderate the session after your session because you have done the uh, top level moderation and uh, it's a challenge task to catch up with. So, however, I will try my best to talk about uh, this uh, session from the angle of how to create uh, sustain sustainability through the investment in the brands. This, we know sustainable development goals consists of 17 goals, each of them targeting and contributing to sustainability. Without investment, the sustainability would not be achieved. Without investment, the sustainability and the, the development goals would not be achieved. But where should I start the investment? Where should the investment? Now we have the opportunity to talk about the Brand. Why brands? The question would be uh, straightforward. When we talk about investment, there are different angles. We talk about return on investments, uh, net present value for, from certain period, etc., from different accounting principle, or from social value, from environment value, or governance value. So let us listen to the specialist from worldwide, including the specialists from Austria. Luckily, they are present in person here. To the Boston, United States, and uh, to London, UK, and to East Istanbul, and Shenzhen, as uh, China as well. So we have the opportunity to listen to them from different angles. Let me introduce you the specialist uh, in the sequence of uh, global value chain presentation in the best way. And uh, they are, first, Mr. Herbert Kovart. He is uh, in person here. And uh, he is uh, the managing partner of Deloitte Austria. And he has been working in the area of uh, accounting principle and practice, in particular in MA sectors for more than 20 years, and uh, he would uh, share the value of accounting principle from the uh, inside and different cases and talk about uh, how the company would increase their value through investment in the brand. The company with the brand would live longer with long life. And this is the, the first one I want to give the floor to Herbert. Herbert, the floor is yours. Yeah, Weishi, thanks a lot. And uh, it's a great pleasure being here at the Brand Global Summit. Also, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, it, it's interesting. I can confirm. So, look, uh, Deloitte is not only in Austria. Deloitte is all over the world. There is nearly in every country the there is a Deloitte practice, and we are the biggest professional service advisor. 
And if we look at our client bases and if we look at our clients here in Austria, we see the difference. We see companies having successful, well-managed brands and they are the outperformers. They are doing best. And interesting, not having the last years also the best growth, now we see what's happening in crisis, in COVID crisis. If you have a good, well-established brand, then it means that in the long term, on a sustainable basis, you can generate cash flow. If there is a crisis situation and your cash flow decreases, maybe there is no cash flow, then you have another perception by the stakeholders. What are the stakeholders? These are the financial institutions and that means you are better off in crisis and that's exactly what we see now. So we see a well-managed, successful brand yeah, is a guarantee for having better growth, but is also a safeguard in crisis, like here in COVID crisis. What we also see is uh, that authorities lag a little bit behind. If you look at the uh, financial institutions, if you look at financial regulators, <clears throat> and if you say what the brand should be, the brand should be recognized, that you say uh, brand should influence essentially ratings, brands should be a collateral, then we see that we have to have changes, not here only in Europe, I would say worldwide, in, in, in the US, in China, elsewhere. Um, we see more and more, if you take an example, if you buy an old-fashioned machine, you get a collateral, um, it's something you can capitalize in your balance sheet, but with immaterial property, you can't capitalize, according to many accounting principles, and you can't use it as collateral in many cases. Yeah? I think uh, this is something we have to change in the future, and I think that COVID makes it uh, and demonstrates it in a strong way that we have to change that. And it's also interesting, um, if you look at small and medium-sized businesses, and you know 95%, for instance, of Austrian businesses are medium-sized businesses and small businesses, and also in, in other neighboring countries is like that. And we see the combination uh, between digitization on one side and brands on the other side uh, means small business can play on the whole world market. Yeah? Something which was not possible, I would say, decades, two decades ago, that a small Austrian or other European country could also sell their products on other continents. Now, if you have a homepage, if you are digitized, and if you uh, have a strong brand, so you have a well-managed brand, then you can have as market the whole world. And I would say the, the third factor, and we know uh, worldwide we have a so-called war of talents. Yeah? We have job profiles where we do not find the, the right people. And if a company has a, a well-managed, successful brand, and high reputation, this is also something you can get with outperformers. So the brand is the basis for um, being more uh, resistant in crisis. Yeah? The brand is something where you get uh, better financing, yeah? especially if the financing environment also as regards uh, regulators will change. Uh, you can attract good people, the outperformers, and and it's a boost together with digitization for small and medium enterprises. Uh, thank, thank you very much, Herbert. And it is a wonderful description of the value from shareholder aspect of the brand. And it is uh, the driving force for the high return on investment. This is uh, basically the decision making process for the entrepreneur who are doing the investment in the brands. The question is now, I, will, I want to introduce the second uh, panelist. The question is now, how can make the brand attentive 
for the investment and for investors. Let us listen to uh, a top specialist in the area of brand selection and screening in the systematic way to get attention of investment. And the fund management specialist, uh, Mr. Sikantans, with us today in person. Floor is yours, please. Thank you, thank you. Um, may I briefly focus on uh, what is actually important for an uh, investor, for a fund manager or asset manager like ourselves? We are working for our customers. Might they buy our fund or might they be just uh, running their personal uh, investments by asset management tools? So it is important for us to get the, the right stock picks at the right time. So just focusing on the brand alone, for example, is a, a kind of a thing that investors might not understand from uh, a return perspective. Let me give an example. We've got wonderful brand names, especially in the oil industry. For example, Shale, Ride Light Shale, uh, British Petroleum, and so on and so forth. Was it a good investment during the past months? No, it wasn't, because they didn't move. They didn't produce any meaningful returns. Now, the thing is this. Um, brand, brands create value. They create um, basically uh, intangible values to the balance sheets where they don't show up. Where they should show up, as we jo uh, uh, just heard before, but they don't. So uh, we as a fund manager or an asset manager have to find a way how to get our hands on the brand values of a company without being able to touch on the numbers because they are not just there. To give you an idea, we are screening roughly 27,000 companies each and every night, income statements, balance sheets, trying to find the best stocks. Um, Whatever best stocks are is something to start with, which should be discussed because best stocks means exactly what. Uh, what is a good stock for me might not be a good stock for you. Some people are running a more conservative approach to uh, their, uh, basically their risk appetite is not that big as the risk appetite of another person. So we, the right stock is something uh, which needs to be discussed with your clients or uh, in the, should be in the statements of the fund. In principle, what we're doing is we are separating growth from value. We are running a good deal of our investment fund brand Global Select in the value section, meaning we are looking for dividend stocks, we are, are looking for strong cash flows, which we just heard is important in times of crisis. But also, we are looking for the rising stars, the apples, the Red Bulls, uh, the um, Microsofts, if you want to, of tomorrow. They are there, but uh, they are tough to spot. So we're looking for something which we can put our hands on. And one of the most important things we are looking for is operating profit. You know. If you have a good brand, what comes along with it is pricing power. If you are able to control your market in a certain way that gives you pricing power and gives you the ab ability to rise prices, to raise prices and create larger profit margins, that's exactly where you find the rising stars. They control their market. Think of... Uh, Think of NVIDIA. NVIDIA is one of our best examples, which, by the way, uh, their share price have surpassed their pre-corona high by far in the meantime. Uh, NVIDIA is an American video, US video card maker, at least they were. Now they are into uh, auto um, autonomic driving. They are into cloud businesses. So they built on their brand, okay? And if you compare to NVIDIA, that is a growth company with a good brand name. Uh, for example, take another one, which is a value company, which is also well known uh, in the meantime, which is Microsoft. 
Microsoft doesn't belong into the growth sector anymore. So they create dividend yield in the meantime, they are very cash rich, so they are a sound investment and a wonderful brand. And uh, again, for us as a fund manager, it is very important besides picking the right stocks is being very systematic. <coughs> we, we do not uh, do any emotional investments. By the way, we are not into Tesla, which is a wonderful company, but they are ridiculously expensive. So we just don't buy that. But being consequent in your approach, uh, don't change around with the, with the latest taste on Wall Street or Main Street and slip or, uh, swipe around with uh, certain, uh, no, we don't do this. We change it because that works better now and might not work tomorrow. That's the opposite of changing too often is what works today, might not work tomorrow. So we're using a back-tested approach. And um, again, we found wonderful rising star companies like uh, Crayon Group, which is a Norwegian company you probably have not heard of, but uh, you might, heard, might hear from them in the future. So uh, that was just a brief introduction to our thinking as an investor, how we are trying to get our hand on brands beside the uh, the wonderful work of Gerd Rebecek with his uh, ISO uh, loan. Okay, so thank you. Thank you very much for your description from the invest, investor aspect, how to screening ties, uh, screen ties uh, the companies uh, from brand aspect uh, to attract uh, investment. There's another aspect we need to consider. You are willing to invest whether the entrepreneur would like to take the investment. So it means how to define the price of the brand, the pricing of brand value. And as of course, it's a driving force for the business, driving force for investment, for economic growth as well. But we should consider two aspects as well. Okay, this is one and second. We consider also the not only asset-based lending, we could consider also intangible aspect. So this is also brand, the value of brand, the facets. Now I think we change the camera to United States. The Mr. Stephen Unger, he is uh, the specialist in the two subjects I mentioned before, from the intangible uh, asset based uh, lending aspect and also from the uh, pricing of brand value aspect. He is a professor at uh, the University of uh, New Hampshire in United States and he has a solid experience in the structure, product design and development. Uh, I give the floor to Stephen. Stephen, can you hear him? Yes, can you hear me? Okay, well, wonderful. Stephen, floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, so thank you for having me and uh, giving me the opportunity to talk about this very important uh, issue of brand value pricing, uh, and especially its implications on the promotion of sustainability, which is now a, it is a very important topic. So let me start with an, uh, the definition, actually, of the brand value. What do we understand under a brand value? So basically, we are talking about the brand value uh, when a well-known brand can actually charge a premium relative uh, to its uh, competitors or generic brands. So then we are talking about uh, generating a brand value. Uh, the first remarkable observation we make uh, when we look at financial and economic data, uh, which we have from uh, past history, uh, is that brands and intellectual property creates economic value and uh, therefore sustainability. So th that's a proven fact. We can uh, see this empirically in the data. Uh, the question is, uh, how does a stronger brand actually create uh, more economic value and sustainability? 
So I will briefly mention uh, just the, the main explanations, uh, which in my opinion are the main drivers for this value creation uh, and then explain them in a little bit more in detail. Uh, so a stronger brand creates more economic value and sustainability, uh, first of all, uh, because intangible assets uh, strengthen the balance sheets. That's one very important factor. Uh, the second point is uh, that um, brand value can also serve as collateral. Uh, could also be used for licensing and franchising. Uh, and further corporations could demand higher prices for the products and services uh, for the reason we said before, uh, when they are simply outperforming generic brands. Uh, and this in turn, of course, when they uh, face a higher turnover increases their company valuation of course and this creates therefore economic growth so mostly the reason for the creation uh, of economic uh, value and sustainability uh, lies actually in the empirical evidence that uh, factors which uh, lead to sustainability such as uh, the esg factors uh, they improve the image of the uh, business and therefore um, they promise actually a competitive advantage uh, over its competitors. So investors are not altruistic, as we know, uh, and they base their investment decisions um, on where they can expect higher returns. So um, by pursuing uh, to boost uh, the brand value, companies automatically try to implement um, sustainable sustainable measures to boost their brand value. So in order to create brand value, uh, corporations need financing, yeah? but how to get this financing? So since uh, small and medium enterprises um, face the problem that uh, most of the, the, the value of early stage ventures lies in the intangible assets value of brands and intellectual properties, uh, which are not explicitly reported uh, on the balance sheet. Uh, uh, it's uh, a systemic problem for them to monetize their uh, intangible assets uh, value and um, brand and intellectual prop uh, properties. So a solution to create um, sustainability uh, through brand value is to collateralize uh, intellectual property. Uh, for this, the the pricing of the brand uh, value is crucial yeah, since it uh, would enable intangible uh, asset-based lending uh, as well as licensing and franchising, uh, which as we said before, uh, would again create uh, more equity value, uh, increase uh, economic growth uh, and therefore the market share of the corporation. Uh, here you can see the, the points which I'm right now mentioning. Um, moreover, uh, once a pricing scheme uh, is established in the market, uh, intellectual property rights uh, would uh, also be able to become tradable. It's an important factor, uh, which would represent uh, the creation of a new asset class, actually. So uh, a new tradable asset class, uh, in turn, would create more liquidity for the small and medium-sized uh, medium enterprises, and therefore uh, build more resilience in the economy. Uh, therefore, for more accurate pricing, uh, we need more information and data. Uh, so what would be a, a need in the market for this would be, for example, the creation of a, a brand rating agency, which gathers the information and the data and processes it to come up with a rating. So that's, in my opinion, uh, the most important factors uh, for which, with respect to brand value pricing and how it uh, creates uh, sustainability and economic growth in the market. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you very much, Stefan. Stand by, and uh, you will be asked uh, at a later stage. And uh, let us uh, change the camera to other place. It's uh, confidential at this stage. Why? Let us consider two aspects. Number one, we have, we have been talking about uh, the perception from investment aspect, investor aspect and investment taking aspect. And we have been uh, talked uh, about uh, the SME and also the Wolfgang talk about uh, some big names uh, in corporation. Herbert talked about SME as well and Stephen 
talk about uh, the two aspects. Now, where is the balance point we talk about both SMEs from very beginning, even in the engine period, and least company at a big uh, stock exchange. So we would like to li listen to some persons, specialists uh, in this area, what are their perceptions. The Mr. Babes Artus, he is sitting now in Istanbul, Turkey. He is a former senior advisor of the London Stock Exchange Group and the executive chairman of the World Business Angel Investment Forum, affiliate to the G20 conference. Now let us give the floor to Babes. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear chairman. Um, I want to uh, start by asking a question. What is the difference between a traditional business owner and a millennium business owner? Because you mentioned in your introduction part that we are going to uh, also tap to SMEs in this, in this uh, branding uh, process. Generally, SMEs are defined under the traditional business owners framework. But startups, scale-ups, high growth businesses are generally under the millennium uh, business, business own, owners uh, framework. The main difference between these two, both of them are entrepreneurs, by the way. I mean, traditional business owners, millennium business, they are both entrepreneurs. But the difference is in the mindset of these entrepreneurs while they are developing their business models. Traditional business owners generally don't put exit and exit strategy as an important item into their agenda while they are establishing their businesses. Millennium business owners focus on two things, business and exit. By time, traditional business owners start discovering the opportunities uh, of uh, exit uh, market, and they focus on by time uh, to, to exit issue two. What is the most important module of exit, a successful exit. There are two important modules. Entrepreneur, himself or herself, and brand. Entrepreneurs who could achieve turning their brand to a tangible asset always raise better finance smarter finance and more finance than others. Why? Because investors invest, smart investors invest in entrepreneurs and brands. So branding is the, one of the two important uh, modules of the, of the uh, exit strategy, which is a must for a successful business plan. If so, I have to, I think, answer now the question, if branding is the most important, one of the most important aspects of a company, then what does make a brand valuable for investors? As an investor, I, why will I invest in this brand, in this industry, but not in this brand? What is the criteria here? 
what is the investor's mindset while deciding to invest in one brand but not the other one? There are three important core values plus one after COVID. Investors care very much. In my personal investor investments and what I see from my, my um, background, while um, Mr. Chairman introduced me, he mentioned about my senior advisorship to the London Stock Exchange Group. But before that, many years ago, I was a board member of European Franchise Federation as the, as the uh, founder of Turkish Franchise, uh, Turkish Franchise Association in 1995. Uh, so there are three important core values investors care very much while while giving a financial valuation to brand the first is ethical governance second is standards of excellence and the third one is quality leadership these three values are increasing the value of the brand or decreasing the value of brand. Quality leadership, ethical governance, and standard of excellence. So after Mr. COVID decided to travel around the world, we, I think, have to now add one more, one more uh, item to these uh, criteria. How well the company could achieve the business transformation and digital transformation. And if the company is a company that can adapt itself to the new normal, this is very important. Now we are checking first if the company we are going to invest in as a good entrepreneur, because we invest in jockey, not the horse. Does it have a good brand, which carries these three, which reflects these three core values? And if this company could achieve the business transformation. So these three important modules are important in the investment de decision now, not only in the early stage equity markets, even in the, in the, uh, the, the, the mature markets and at the scale up level, uh, at the merge and acquisition process, and even at the exit stage through, through uh, stock exchange or uh, uh, the acquisition uh, processes. So I want to thank so much uh, for for uh, inviting me as a as a uh, speaker. Maybe I am a little bit out of uh, this branding process, but uh, I think I think um, I mean it became uh, beneficial uh, for brand own owners to understand the investors' current mindset uh, in their in their uh, financial uh, roadmap. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the regards to your inside explanation, why the investors uh, make decision into the certain sort of enterpr enterprises. Uh, we, in fact, uh, we we all know there are symptoms for the investment. The investors are willing to invest in well-established and with the gross potential cooperation because they can, they can re reduce their risk investment. And what makes the risk, risk reduced? Because they established the uh, business model and the brands recognized in the, by the market. We all know this is a fundamental principle in investment. However, we need to know how it could be applicable to the social aspect. We are talking about uh, sustainability. How can we make the principle to contribute the investment 
with, uh, with regard so-called, we frequently call it ESG, environmental, sustainable, and uh, also the governance. Let us change the camera to London. Listen to the experience from Madame V. Young. She is uh, the vice president of the British Law uh, Lawyer Town Planning Institute and uh, one of the leading researchers in the 21st Garden uh, approach for yours. And uh, she, before she introduced it, let me give two key messages. She may talk in the area of how to develop a unique selling point of a region. This point, in fact, has been discussed in the previous session, moderated by Sarah, from Vienna. Vienna identify its uniqueness in the regional brands. So let us listen to how the British make it applicable in their own town planning and town development. Floor yours, Dr. Wei Yang. Thank you very much, Chair. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Wei Yang, Vice President of the Royal Town Planning Institute uh, in the UK. It's my great pleasure to join you from London. Um, I know former speakers talk about uh, regional uh, investment and also branding development and also a lot of other speakers in our panel already talk about branding and investment. I'm a town planner, so I want to take you to a city scale and talk about how city branding can help attract inward investment and benefit the whole community. Next page, please. To, to make my talk more interesting, I would like to share a real story with you. Uh, Newton Kings is a British new town designed with Garden City principles. Newton Kings was designated, uh, sorry, the page before, go back one page. Yeah, Newton Kings was designated as a new town in 1967 with a target population of 250,000 people. From very beginning, the city was planned to be an attractive city full of innovative ideas. So this image is an artist's impression drawing 1974, showing how the city would look like in 1990 the futuristic picture inspired so many people. Next page, please. Now, Milton Kings is one of the UK's most successful business centers outside London. The city sent out a very clear message in its very early days that it would be a city in the forest, an open city for all communities, a city with a vision. Next page, please. So as a garden city, there are more than 1,800 hectares of parks and woodlands in Newton Kings. The design concept was a forest city. Therefore, the city planted more than 20 million trees in the city. And also you can see gardens, parks, lakes, paddocks, woodland in the city. In some part of the city, it just looks like countryside. So the picture I show actually is in the very center of the city, but uh, you can see sheep there as well. Next page. So the Milton Kings, from the very beginning, because it's a garden city, is also an open city for all communities. A dedicated team was created in Milton Kings Development Corporation to facilitate the implementation of community infrastructure. Many charities and community groups were formed to create a sense of belonging. The city is open for investment and open for any culture around the world. This picture is uh, Milton Kings Peace Pagoda. Built in 1980, it is the first of this kind in Western Hemisphere. When the founder of the project was looking for a site in Europe, nowhere wanted to build it because of the religious and the cultural difference. But the Milton Kings heard about it and said, we are a new city, we are open to any culture and any community. So now the Peace Pagoda sits in the extensive parkland of Milton Kings. Next to it is a Buddhist temple with regularly hosting uh, events and uh, services. Also, there are churches and mosques, etc. in Newton Kings. There's even a tree cathedral. So people from Eastern Asia think Newton Kings has an extensive, has an excellent feng shui. It helped Newton Kings attract many Japanese 
and the Taiwanese in investment in early days. Uh, the next page, please. Also, Liu Xinping has a is a city with a long term vision. The lavish landscape of the great roads and the major parks were transferred to the Liu Xinping Parks Trust. It's an independent charity which is separate from the city's authority. The intention is to resist pressures to build on the parks over time. So the parks, uh, the parks trust, uh, is involved with a um, portfolio of commercial properties. The income from which pays for the upkeeping of the green space of the whole city for the last 50 years. The next page, please. So now, Milton Keynes is one of the UK's most successful business centers outside London. Its job growth is amongst the highest percentage in the UK. Milton Keynes is also home to several national and international companies, including the UK headquarters of Audi, Audi, uh, Mercedes-Benz, Santander Bank, the whole base, etc., etc. Now, over 10,000 businesses are thriving in Milton Keynes. 90% of the business are SMEs. Also carrying on this innovative legacy, Beauty Kings has become an evolving 21st century smart city. It now has the second highest concentration of digital and technology job in the UK. Also smart solutions in water, waste, energy, transport, and assisted living are being applied in the city. Next play, next page. And so what we can learn from Beauty Kings I think it's the clear strategy of investing in people, nature, and uh, innovation. So it has a long-term vision to be the best and has a strong leadership, also important local champions. Confidence and the pride is built into the city from very early days. And also, I think the last speaker said, commitment to design excellence and being innovative. So my conclusion is, if we can consider branding from a strategic and the sustainability perspective, we can create unique selling points and help our cities and towns thrive for generations to come. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have been listening to a wonderful case, the application of investment in a brand and for the brand and build a brand of a region. From this angle, and so we can cons we can see the brands for sustainability investment in brands is a, a general principle if, which is applicable for different areas not only for individual corporation small smes uh, big listed companies but also for the local governance and uh, local selling unique selling points either from people, innovation aspect, some even from sport, from other industrial sectors. So let us listen to another story. The story we know quite well, the open up of uh, and reform of China in the last 40 years, starting from Shenzhen, from the fish village to now the one of the leading industry metropolis in the world and uh, we would like to invite one of the pioneers for the reform uh, for the Shenzhen and Mr. Wu Guangquan he is uh, the uh, chairman of uh, Shenzhen Federation uh, Federation of Shenzhen Industries and also chairman of China Federation of Industrial Economics. He used to be the chairman of Avic International Holdings. And many people know him because he is quite famous in China. Unfortunately, the, as we know, today is the National Day of China and also the uh, Mid-Autumn mid Days Festival of China. And he is with his uh, uh, mother in a remote village. He's not, there's a digital divide. He's not connected well to our conference. He uh, dedicated his one, one of his assistants uh, to read some message. The Shenzhen, come back to the 
uh, before hand over to Shenzhen, China, I would like, would like to, to emphasize one point was mentioned by uh, Stephen Unger about uh, the brand rating mechanism. And they have certain kind of brand rating mechanism established for last years in the industrial sectors. And so why I was uh, responsible for South South Corporation of the Needle, and so we have been working with them for eight years together. Okay, let me give the floor to Shenzhen, China. Uh, Mr. Okay. Fan here is a citizen uh, of uh, Ms. Wu and uh, deliver the message of Ms. Wu. The floor is yours, Mr. Fan. Hi. So hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Andy Fan, and I'm the president, assistant of Shenzhen Federation Industries in China. On behalf of Mr. Wu, I would like to express our gratitude for giving him this privilege to be the panelist in this conference. For some technical reasons, Mr. Wu is not able to join us today, and he asked me to deliver this speech for him. As we know, Shenzhen is China's first special economic zone and 2020 is the special 40th anniversary. Through rapid and sustainable growth for 40 years, Shenzhen now is the most successful model of China's urbanization, industrialization, and modernization progress. Since its foundation, Shenzhen Federation of Industry has been moving, has, has been motivating local companies in Shenzhen to create brands and invest in brands as global market competitors. We have been consistently organized Shenzhen top brand cultivation and evaluation brands, evaluation uh, events for 19 years. For the first 17 years, we have evaluated and select 809 Shenzhen top brands such as Huawei, BYD, DJI, and so on and so forth. These companies just account for 0.4% of total companies in Shenzhen. However, they contribute 48.6% of city sales and 39.18% of city taxes and 35.28% of city exports. So this number has proved Shenzhen is the leading city for creating brands in China. In this digital era, we believe Growth is the key for corporate to survive and sustain, sustainable, uh, in, sustainable investment in brands is the key for corporate growth. Take Huawei for example, its sales growth from 148.1 billion RMB in 2009 to 858.8 billion RMB in 2019. So in just 10 years, its sales jumped six times. Its sustainable investment in brands plays a vital role in the sales growth because Huawei invests a lot of money in brands, not only in China, but the rest of the world, especially Europe. Those markets contribute a lot to his sales rise. Tencent, the digital giant in China, has the same strategies, which led the US ban for its SMS APP WeChat due to its huge impact in the US. Vivo, Oppo, DJI have similar stories too. On the contrary, some companies that did not have a sustainable investment in brands, such as Gianni, the previous cell phone giant in China, went bankrupt last year. Through our practice, sustainable investment in brands is the key for sustainable brands. In the meanwhile, brand is also the competitive advantage for companies. From the perspective of corporate growth and international cooperation, the, sustain, the sustainable brand is also the first choice of investment. The 40 years progress of reform and opening up of Shenzhen special economic zone is also the progress of local companies entering and competing in the global market. The international influence of Shenzhen top brands and international prestige brands will be the power to drive more companies to join the trend of creating 
and investing in internationalizing brands in Shenzhen and even the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm very honored to share and communicate my view on brands with all of the you guys via this platform, where I hope we can learn the experience of how to create growth through sustainable investment in brands from other countries. On behalf of Shenzhen Federation of Industries, I would like to give my oral invitation to all of you to join our annual Shenzhen International Top Brand Week next May, one of the biggest brand events in China. Let's work together to motivate and help more companies to join the international development for creating and investing in brands. Thank you so much. All the best from Shenzhen, China. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Fan, for conveying our uh, best regards to the remote uh, Ms. Wu as well. Uh, now, dear colleagues, dear audience, you have heard a round of uh, voice from the top specialists in the world on brand and brand investment from different angles, different phases of investment. I would like to open the floor to the world. And uh, any question would come in, please let me know. Let us utilize the opportunity to learn the insight from the in top specialist. If there's no further questions, I will raise up a few questions to the individual specialist. And please, worldwide, please feel free to message in and to get your questions answered. Now, let us quickly review what we have heard. From Herbert, we have heard basically four points. Number one, that the companies own a brand live better and long. Number two, the accounting principle from the basic uh, the three tables utilized in the corporation reflect that the brand would receive more support from bank. And uh, third, in the crisis areas, you. The, the company may be forgotten, but the brand will be memorized. The people recognize the brand and for the diversified services. And fourth, the brand played a role to attract the outperformance, excellent talents. So I would like to give the floor to, to you, and so you are opposite me in person. We, we conduct uh, the session in hybrid way, and uh, in person and remote combined. So I utilize the opportunity to raise up a question to Herbert. Herbert, would you like give one specific example on how the, in the situation COVID-19 pandemic, the brand could play a role in your experience in, as a managing partner of the Deloitte Austria? Yeah, so I said a successful, well-managed well brand helps to come through the crisis. And I can give you two examples. Uh, imagine a restaurant chain with a good brand. Yeah, they can switch to catering. Or imagine a movie producer then using also streaming services. Yeah? So we see if you have a strong brand, you can modify, you can diversify your service offerings. But in modern world, and I would say in, in the new normal, as we say, it's always the combination between brand and digitization. Yeah? Because then you can also use virtual ways, digitized ways to offer, still offer your products in crisis. Yeah? That's what we saw. Thank you very much, Herbert. I give the floor to Mr. Wolfgang Schickertanz. And uh, you have been talking about uh, the systematic approach 
in screen and the brand selection for the companies and you have been screening more than 27,000 companies and from management of a fund aspect. My question is, what sort of companies have been under your screening? It is only SMEs or it is a startup or you are also involved in this brand screening for the bigger names? Uh, well, to be clear about it, we're just uh, our investment fund and our customers, they just want us to uh, select listed stocks. So we do not uh, invest in any other forms for our customer, at least not so far. We are exploring uh, other opportunities as, as well, uh, being private equity, being um, other forms of uh, non, not that volatile kind of uh, approach to capital markets because that has been uh, a burden to our customers like uh, many others too. Markets have become pretty volatile. So they're looking for um, non-daily uh, listed things also. But um, on the other hand, it's a regulatory thing that we as an asset manager have to follow. So yes, to be clear, for the time being, we're just uh, looking at listed, stock exchange listed companies. Thank you very much. Let us change the floor to the United States. Stefan Unger. Stefan, are you standing by? Yes. Okay, Stefan, we have been listening to you about a, a comprehensive picture of uh, pricing of brand value and the intangible asset based lending. Uh, you have a few l proposals how and what should be done, for example, uh, brand uh, assessment, brand uh, rating system. The needs exist. The question is, from brand, brand assessment and the value pricing point of view, what is the difference between the regional brands and the global brands? How could, what is the criteria to a price? I would say uh, basically, so what you are um, talking about is the difference between a global generic brand and a premium brand. You can actually measure this uh, in terms of uh, simply sales and uh, when you compare the equity value generated through these sales and the goodwill which is being uh, revealed in the balance sheet uh, simply because from the goodwill you include the intangible assets which are priced in there. So that's where you can take the difference uh, between uh, the actual uh, premium brands versus generic brands and figure out what's the added value of the brand. So that's from a pricing point of perspective an important factor how you could figure out this additional value, in my opinion. Thank you very much. Uh, by now, uh, we raise up the three questions because uh, the questions uh, come up from the audience. And uh, let us... Uh, going to complete the session without uh, if there's no further question to come in. Okay, and I, I would like to take this opportunity to convey my best regards to the remote panelist in USA, Stephen Onga, to the Istanbul, Turkey, and to the London, and uh, to China, and also to the two persons in presence here. And thank you very much. Thanks. I would, uh, I would uh, give the floor to Sarah again. And so I try to uh, let us enjoy the further wonderful session. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Weishi. Yes, a fist bump, absolutely. That's what we do. Um, 
because we're currently in a pandemic or have a hybrid event. Thank you so much for your panel, Brand Investments for Sustainability. Thank you so much. And thank you so much to Herbert and Wolfgang for joining us here in person and for everyone who is online.